Right, what is up guys? How is it going? Uh, today is a completely non-China related video. It is just something that I keep getting asked a lot. Alex, how do you make your thumbnails? Now, I am no thumbnail expert. I am by nowhere means the most artistic, amazing thumbnail designer person, whatever you want to call it. But I get asked a lot of questions by people asking me, how do I do my thumbnails? So recently I saw a video by Pacific YT, I think his name is, and he basically said that it really annoys him when people cram in like 10 words on a thumbnail and it looks ridiculous. And it is, it's a fair point. It, uh, a lot of people make really terrible looking thumbnails. It's either just a screenshot of them like, yeah, with like some crappy clip art over the top of it or they cram too many words in. So generally people just make these bad thumbnails. I don't think mine are great but I don't think they're bad either. Anyway I thought today I would show you exactly how I make my thumbnails. I'll turn on my computer, let's hop into Photoshop and I show you how to how I make them in Photoshop. This is a tutorial for Photoshop by the way. Okay let's go. Right so here we are in Adobe Photoshop. I guess you can use any other kind of photo editing software available. I know it's a very cliche thing to say, but it is basically you can use any photo editing software which allows you uh, to do similar processes to what I'm doing. But this tutorial today is for people that are using Adobe Photoshop. So like you can see here on the screen, um, I haven't got a little round thing around my cursor, so you just have to follow where my pointer is. It's quite easy, anyway, I guess. Uh, so here are all my previous thumbnails, or a bunch of them, anyway. And you can see I always start with a JPEG image, which is usually cut from the video itself. I do this in Adobe Premiere Pro, and I'll find an area of my movie, vlog, whatever, that I want to make the thumbnail for, and I select a cool image, or an image which I think I can make cool, and then I will basically just export it. It will already be perfect size for a thumbnail because it is 1920 by 1080, it's straight from the video, I guess, unless, you know, some, some sites do have different settings, but this is, for me, this is good enough. This is what I like to do. So anyway, you can see here, here is the thumbnail I did for my 60 second, for Monday in 60 seconds. And here is the, the starter image which I opened up. You can see I opened it up just a minute ago just to practice this before because this is actually the first time I've ever screen recorded or ever done a tutorial. So anyway, we go into here, look, we load up our image. Here is the image um, uh, that I want to use. And for this, I'm going to use, the subject will be my son here. Look, looking very cute in his orange space uh, super uh, looking very cute in his uh, orange jumper with the astronaut on it and towing a basket. So first of all, this first layer is going to be the background layer. Okay, this is like a base for everything. And then um, we will make a new layer with our subject, which is Ethan, my son. So we need to come up here. You see this? This is the quick selection tool. Okay, so we want the quick selection tool. And we're just going to like literally mash this round on where the area where Ethan is and you'll see it hasn't included everything that I wanted it to before it switched over to minus so we need to now we need to go around and basically basically I like to go around roughly and select as much of it as I can without needing to finesse it. Sometimes you can get it almost perfect in the first pass. Uh, you have to be aware, look here on the astronaut, you can see these little dancing ant lines. That means that that is not selected. So we need to make sure that, like sometimes Photoshop will not, on the quick selection, will not pick up on these small details. And then when you make your copy, it copies everything but that, that particular part of it and it messes up. So you need to make sure that you have your dancing ant line all around the outside of just the area you want and be very careful because sometimes it is easy to pass it by and not get it, it it's, it's annoying because then I'm not in good enough at Photoshop that I can go back and change it after I've done it so I usually end up having to start again. Uh, you can see this look is looking pretty good. We, uh, we've got it really pretty close. We can go back around there. Look, I want to cut this middle shape because I don't want the floor looking, it will look weird if the floor is still included in this. So let's go around the side of the basket here. 
I tell you what, because this is kind of slow, I will catch up with you guys in just a minute when I've selected all of this, okay? Selected around Ethan quite nicely. There's a few parts where you could, right over here, you really could finesse it and get it really perfect, but you'll see, because we're gonna add a stroke, like a, basically a, a white line of right around the outside of Ethan and an outer glow, it won't matter. It doesn't need to be 100% like perfect because it's, we're, not doing, we're not trying to put him neatly into another photograph, which you'll see, you'll see. So basically now look, now we've got him all selected, just need to, without even leaving the quick selection tool, we just need to right click and then go down to layer via copy. Now here, look, we can turn off this layer, the little eyes or the visibility thing here. So if we turn off the layer one, we can only see our background. So now if we turn off our background, we'll only see what we just selected and cut. Here is our subject, look, he looks, we can see it's a good enough selection already. He is there towing the basket. The basket has got the handles, have got the, the transparent background. It is good enough. So what we're gonna do now, we'll turn that back on, go up to new layer, and so layer and then go to new fill layer, solid color. Okay, so we're gonna choose a color. Let's go for a color like this kind of, uh, let me make it a little bit more vibrant, like this kind of blue. Select okay. And now we can only see blue and that is because in our layer palette here, look, it is at the top. This is organized like, like a hierarchy. The thing at the top will be most visible and if it covers the entire screen, it will cover everything. So what we want to do is move this down in between our background and our subject cutout layer, which had made it through the mask, and I switched to the lasso tool, drew around them while having the layer, the cutout layer selected, and then just press delete to get rid of them. So now you can see that we have our Ethan, our subject, the, is on top of the background layer, the color fill layer. So now you can see him over the top of the color layer like it's all one picture, but we can't see the background. So we need to go to the, make sure the color fill, make sure our color fill is selected. Then go up here to opacity and lower our opacity until we can see the background. Now you can go super low and it just starts tinting it. I usually bring it up so we can see some of the background like this and maybe a little, little bit more, like here. And then that is it done. So now we need to get our stroke and our outer glow. These are super easy, super fast. We just go um, go up here basically to the layer one, the, our cutout layer, right click, blending options. And you can see all these stylized options. Now I mine already will look like in the thumbnail because it kind of keeps the settings that you've used for the last time, so stroke. There's my stroke, look, Ethan now has a nice stroke around him. If you want to change this, we can double click on it and then we can go here, look, size, so we can change it to this huge stroke. Wow, look at that. <laughs> so, like, I usually go something around like six or seven, maybe, something like this. And then you can change the color, you can change the opacity, the position. Let's go on outside, not inside. And then we can you know, play around with it again, just to maybe get it like this. And then we can also add, here we go, look, outer glow. So the outer glow, if we go to the outer glow thing, you have your opacity, your noise, your spread, and your size, the spread, look, if we turn the spread right up, it goes all the way out there. So I like it about here, 29. And the size means that it will go miles out, miles in. So I just usually play around with this until I get it looking how I like, which is somewhere around, I guess around here would be pretty good. Looks like he's got like a cool spacey glow now. So now we are done with that. I can just spot another part that I need to use the lasso tool. Oh shit, nope, sorry, lasso tool to Get rid of that. Okay, great, look, see, and there we are. It is finished. Now we can just add our text. You do this 
any way you want. Look, so I did this, I typed in Monday, resize that like that, and then you know I put it round, and we can then move it and position it somewhere over here. Maybe move this round so it looks a bit more straight. Put that, say, there. And then usually what I do is I will then do each individual word because I find I can position it better by doing it like this. 60. Unfortunately, this font I'm using doesn't have a uh, an option. It doesn't have the numbers. This font is Bromo, by the way, just in case you were wondering what it was. You can see it right there. So yes, that'll do. And Okay, great. So I won't bother for the sake of this tutorial. I won't bother. You can you can play around with your own this one, I guess. Or maybe I could do it quickly. I guess what I used here actually was maybe impact, and then brought that up bigger. But now we can go back in and organize where we want everything. So now we just need to go through like that there. That there, and we'll have that one there in the middle. And now, if you look in our layers panel, look, we can pull our layers panel down so it makes it bigger. What I like to do then is go through and maybe um, we can get stuff and play around with it, like in right. We click in blending options. Look, now we can go back through and we can give it an outer glow. So then, same with six. Okay, sorry, whoops, 60 seconds. Blending options. We can go, I don't know. Let's go outer glow. How about maybe a stroke as well? Look, there we go. Looks pretty dope. And it's actually looking better than the original <laughs> one I did to start with. Um, so seconds, we need to go down to this for seconds. Where is that? Here it is. There we go, we can Go around now, blending options. Let's go out of glow and stroke. Nah, I think we'll leave without the stroke so it emphasizes the 60. Okay, great. And last one is Monday. And see, Monday, what we can do with Monday is maybe go to a drop shadow. So, drop shadows are great for making things kind of stand out a little bit. Distance, we can play with that. There we go. So you see the shadow there. Spread. Nice. And the opacity, we can make it as dark or as light as we want. I reckon about there. Okay. Get rid of that. Boom. There we are. That is done. That is actually better than... Uh, I actually like the text in this more than I did in the original one. So I might actually just save this out so I can maybe swap it over on my YouTube one because I don't think I can swap it out here on YouTube. But anyway, there we go. That is done. Right, so there you go, guys. That is how I do it. It is... It's a pretty quick, easy method. Uh, it's Like I said, it's not the, the most amazing, huge, crazy, awesome thumbnails, but I think it gets the job done and it makes pretty damn good thumbnails, and I like them anyway. I like to keep a kind of general theme, keep them all looking kind of similar. So anyway, let me know what you think or if you have a better way of doing things, let me know down in the comments. And I guess, guys, I'll see you next time.